to the world here. <laughs> Holy mackerel. <laughs> it is, uh, I don't know how Spider-Man does it. <laughs> it's hard to breathe through this damn thing. Hey everybody, I really appreciate you watching and I'm, uh, you think I want to be out here embarrassing myself in this ridiculous suit? No, I'm doing it for the subs. So hit the subscribe the, button. The rally, <laughs> the subscribe. This is spectacular. If I could do one thing with video, one thing with video companies, this is my scream to the universe yeah. relative to golf instruction. Tech guys, make it happen. Tech guys, make this happen. If I could take a video and highlight either the club or the club head or your right hand or your left hand or your right arm or your left arm or circle your hips or your right knee or your left knee or your feet and whatever I touched and circled was the only thing the person could watch when they watched their swing and they worked on that one thing yeah. people would get so much better so fast it's incredible because Forced you get, concentration you yeah. get you get all of us me included you get distracted with multiple other things and you don't stay on one thing long enough to get a sense of what it's doing Perfect. Yeah. Let's build a little speed, Mike. Okay, so speed is a function of you're just going to make a little more swing. Okay. So as you make a little more swing, now as the club face works this way, now as you build a little more swing, you're, which we can't see because you're blacked out, but what's going to happen is the club now as you go to the top is going to rotate this way a little bit. So the face is going to go from shut to what looks to be square at the top. So it's just a little more swing on both sides. You like that, Mike? Yeah. So there, and then around to the left. See, watching your swing, your club, what your club tends to do too much of. Yeah. It goes back, and then the handle comes forward, and the club goes out away from you too uh, much this way. That's why we're concentrating on making it go a little left. It has to yeah. go around to the left. So if you're just watching my club, if you couldn't see me, and I got a ball sitting there, I go back, the club comes down and it runs into the ball, and immediately when it runs into the ball, the club goes around over here. And where you get in trouble is you, you'd have the face way open and come in here, and then the club would go out away from you. It has to go around to the left. Yeah, it worked a lot on swinging the first base, as you can tell. Too much. We all did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're just building a little speed. We're little speed, and you're keeping the circle. The face works the same. It's a little bigger swing. It works around to the left and the face. I mean, that's it. Yeah. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, watching you, thinking about the club and how the face works going back where it's not getting too far open, and then working the club into the ball and around to the left where the face isn't turning down yeah. is going to make you a significantly better player. Because from the first time I saw you, you were a classic. You're talking about uh, over four years ago. Yeah. yeah. You were a classic open the face, weak grip, drag the handle, turn your body, and then try to catch it up with your hand. Open the face. Yeah. Swing out to right field, come from the inside, hold the angle as long as you can, and then catch it up. There was your yeah. swing. Mm -hmm. So like... Exactly. And, and there's no way for that to be stable. Now, yeah. to pressure the shaft and get more lag, if that's what you're after, this is going to make it so you can do it. How does this connect to getting more lag? Uh, the hottest topic. Well, because your right wrist now, you're not having to unhinge your wrist. You're not having to twist the face to catch the face up. Uh -huh. The biggest reason that most people do this early is because they're trying to catch the face up. If all of a sudden the club face is where, it, even if your wrist stayed totally hinged, if it didn't unhinge at all, and you swung through the ball, you'd still hit the ball straight. Well, now all of a sudden there's no desire to unhinge your wrist early. Because unhinge your wrist early is trying to catch the face up when you don't really have to. Why, but if the why face, is there now no desire to unhinge the wrist early? What, what is the thing that makes you want to unhinge the uh, Because you're having to catch or, the face up. If I was to put that in on only club terms, not wrist terms, in, in club, no desire in, to let in, the in, pass. in club terms, the face is already like this. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to do anything. It's going to square if the face is like this coming down, you're going to have to do, if it goes like this, you're going to have to do something with the club uh, really early, twist-wise, yeah. twist-wise, mm -hmm. to get the face to catch up. Now, I talk about tipping the club out, but that's not unwinding the face. Yes. So if you don't have to unwind the face, 
you know what? Putting this in club only terms connects me to what the Malaska move is the most that I ever have been. Well, now you're starting to feel how the club works, and now it swings around to the left, and the face doesn't turn down. The club's tipped out, oh, sure. and bingo. Yeah. Now, see, that, for me watching you and watching how your club works relative to you, that's the best I've seen you swing in the four years we've been doing this stuff. Yeah, right. Like that. And that's got to feel pretty simple because all you're doing is making what feels to be the club face, like Watson says. You feel like you're almost shutting the club face on the downswing, and then you're swinging it in an arc around to the left on the follow-through, but the club, the toe isn't catching up to the heel. So it feels like, I mean, but you're still hitting a high draw. Yeah. So how do you hit a high draw if the face isn't turning down? Well, the physics of a golf swing the circle with the face closing to the target line but staying at a 90 degree angle to your swing arc, you can hit a draw with no face rotation. It depends on where the ball is in the swing arc. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you don't need a lot of face rotation to hit a draw. Yeah, you could make the uh, you can make the swing robot hit a draw and that thing, that thing doesn't even have it. And, right. it, and it yeah. works, and it doesn't yeah. work the face, it does not, the swing robot does not work the face like this. No. The swing robot works the face like that. Yeah, they, they, um, they preset the machine to be like this. Yep. And then it goes like this. Yep. And then... And then it just goes, and it's on that, it's on that pivot square thing. Square, yeah. And it's, the face is just like this, and then it goes... And when it finishes over here, it finishes like that. The face. Yeah. It does not finish toe up to toe up. Don't be afraid to swing the club head now, the club head, mm -hmm. to the left. Swing it left. There you go. Swing the club head left, but the face doesn't turn down. Okay, so that time you swung the club left, the ball curved. Why did it curve? You turned the face down a little more than you had to. It was left and it was drawing. It, okay. So deep plane wise, what happened there? The face was shut to your path. Mm -hmm. See, so that's too much face rotation through the ball. Now, in your defense, you've had the face, the club behind you, having to twist the face a lot. So that's why we started with those little swings to try to feel what it felt like to hit a shot where you don't have to twist the face. So we start getting control of the arc, the circle, and the face to make the ball go straight. Which shot do you think would help me more trajectory-wise when I'm hitting these pitch shots? High. Hey, High me oh really high why no question high because you want to drag the handle forward all the time so making feeling like you pivot the club earlier where you feel like you get the club head past your hands mm -hmm. is going to help you because you drag your hands way forward and then have to catch the club up so sitting there hitting what you feel is shut face to to adding a lot of reverse shaft lean through the ball like that. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to help you. The worst for you is to hit it low. Because if you try to hit it low, you're going to move forward on it. You're going to you're going to slide, hold off the face, swing out to right field. Okay. So hitting it as high as you can hit it with with without the face rotating relative to your swing arc. Okay, so for the person watching that's thinking Okay, we want the club to be uh, the handle to be a little ahead of uh, of the club head. Right. Why would Brendan want to make the head uh, try to actively make the head pass the hand? Because in when, a high shot. When, 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 what happens when Brendan, when you swing the club, you go back and then you actually get out here this far. So you get too far, the handle gets too far forward. So when you feel like you go back and you feel like that when you come down that the face is staying at a 90 degree angle to your swing arc, but at impact you feel like the club shaft is at a 90 degree angle or leaning back a little bit, uh -huh. so it feels like it's doing this, you're not really going to be here where you're not going to be is out here. So you're going to feel like you're going like this. So you're going to feel like the club is pivoting that the pivot point is happening way back in here instead of pivoting the club in front of the ball. Hmm. So the pivot point happens off your right hip or your right shoulder right now, just like that. And that was even late. So pivot it sooner so you add more 
height negative trajectory, right? So you, you add loft to the face. So pivot it r really early where you add loft to the face through the ball. Now, that was actually good. Mm -hmm. So if I could do that same thing without the, the toe passing the heel. Yeah. yeah. Now the club hit the ground, so that kind of negates the face because that will that typically twists the face. See, that's better. So every time I've watched you, you have tend to have too much download and your hands get way too far forward. Clubwise, and then, the, 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 yeah. the handle is yes. doing what? Yes. Okay. See where... What's the handle doing tonight? Usually? If it were just, just the what the club so, so the handle, you tend to go back like this, mm -hmm. and then you get up to the top, and the handle pulls way mm -hmm. forward, and you get way out here trying to catch it up. It goes here, and then it should come down and pivot back in here. Gotcha. So it should be doing this. And, on and it feels it. like it's doing it way up in here. That's what Jack said. It felt like he released the club from the top. It was impossible to release it too soon. He didn't feel the unhinging of his wrist. He felt like the handle came down, and the club head went out like this. Talk so, about when, when Jack said that you can't release it too soon. Did he put the qualifier that you can't release it on plane too soon? No. Did he have some kind of, if it's on plane, you can't release well, it? Well, yeah, but... Somebody has it on their wall, but it says something about... Yeah, it, it, it's it's, if, it's on, if it's on the correct arc into the ball, you cannot release the club too soon. So if you, if you move the momentum of the club where it no longer is in line with the ball, yeah, you're in trouble. Now, that's a really good shot. I love that. I just didn't like that it went left, but I felt like I did. I, I, you, I got this club going. You got the club yeah. going, but you've, for so long, like everybody, like me, I mean, I'm right in there. I spent so much time trying to get right here. Well, when you get here, two things have got to happen. Either you've got to really rotate your forearms or you've got to spin the heck out of your body to try to catch the face up. Well, once I understood, like I did as a kid, that my right hand and right arm through here should just be going like this, not doing all of this stuff. Now, all of a sudden, from here through the ball, I mean, it wouldn't matter what angle I put. It, the angle or where my hand is relative to my wrist, if I keep my hand way behind my wrist, it just hits the ball low, but it hits it straight. If all of a sudden I catch the club up so that my hand catches up with my wrist, it hits it straight but higher. Okay, so, so what I'm saying is where you've been, where you were coming into the ball, where the face got open and you got way out here trying to figure out how to twist it to catch it up, that's where the hosels come from. I did the same thing. So you don't need a lot of face rotation to hit this golf ball. Toe up to toe up, hardly anybody does that anymore. The tour players, when you see the clubs show up on this side of their swing, when we watch that camera and they can't see you, you see tour players, when their face shows up over here, it shows up like this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't show up like that. They don't twist it. Their right hand, their right arm runs in, and it's just like they're doing this. It's like they're through the ball, they're throwing, their arms going left, and their right hand is releasing or working this way. It's not twisting. Okay, well, I don't have a right hand. I understand. I have a, I have a glove, and I have a, I have a club. So I want, I want the energy of this club head to be going towards the golf ball way right. sooner. Yep. Right. Okay, I got you. And then it goes around to the left, and the face doesn't shut. I mean, that's perfect. Yeah, so good. That's awesome. And the face isn't turning down now.